And this video is sponsored by Brilliant, which is a very cool online STEM learning platform, which I'll talk about more at the end. The results of Abu Dhabi have sent shockwaves through... No, I'm just kidding. We're not. We're not talking about that. No. 2022 is here. And all the new rules and gubbins that were originally supposed to debut last year have finally arrived. And we'll soon be hitting the track for testing and then the races. So today, let's have a look at these brand new wheels and tyres, as F1 finally goes low profile, almost a decade after Michelin started cajoling F1 into losing its chonky, squashy boys. With all the new aero changes and swish-looking cars, the importance of these new wheels might well be lost. Pirelli did a huge amount of testing and development to get these tyres ready. Their stats are incredible. Not only did they prepare 70 prototypes, they did 20,000 kilometres of testing using almost 400 sets of tyres. You can't say they didn't do the grind. So let's start with the obvious, the sizes. While they did get a bit wider and slightly taller in 2017, the side profile of F1 tires and wheels have been basically the same for ages. The wheel, the solid inner part that attaches to the car is increasing from 13 inches to 18 inches. Why we're still talking in inches in a European based sport in 2022 is a bit beyond me. But anyway, in millimeters, we're moving from 330 millimeter diameter wheels to 457 millimeter diameter wheels. It just rolls off the tongue. The tires meanwhile are going from 670 millimeter diameter to 720 millimeter. So a good five centimeters taller. That's about two inches for you inch lovers out there. So that means the wheel is now taking up 63% of the entire radius instead of 49% as it did previously. And the most immediate knock on effect from this is on the suspension and handling. Because the inflated rubber tyre part of the wheel was previously so large, and because an inflated rubber tyre is elastic and springy, the deformations of the tyre sidewall itself was a significant part of the suspension travel in absorbing bumps as well as part of the roll and pitch. Obviously these diagrams are a little bit exaggerated, but you get the gist. Now these smaller sidewalls have far less travel in them and are naturally a little less compliant too. So engineers are going to have to design their suspension with this new tyre characteristic in mind, knowing the tyres aren't going to absorb as much vertical travel. Now this has nothing to do with the fact that some of the cars this year are moving from push rod to pull rod suspension at the front. Push rod suspension is mounted in this way and pull rod this way. This is more related to the new bodywork regulations that have dropped the top of the nose slightly, so some teams have just found it better to mount the suspension at the bottom with the reduced space up top. The knock-on effects on ride are interesting though, as this does go hand in hand with the new rules. Low profile tyres give a stiffer ride, less compliance, less smooth bounce and more hard j -j -j judders over bumps. But with the tyres wanting to keep their new Venturi ground effect floors as consistently low to the ground as possible, we'll be moving towards stiffer cars anyway. Sebastian Vettel predicts a bit of a go-kart feel to the cars. The drivers themselves will also have slightly more impaired vision of course. I mean, they're already sitting very low in the car, so these tyres have always loomed quite large left and right, but now they are those five centimetres taller, as previously mentioned, and they also have these wheel fins along and over the inside of each front tyre. As with all things, this will just be a matter of getting used to. Norris mentioned at the McLaren launch that in Formula 2, where they do already use these larger tyres, uh, sometimes the drivers can't see where the barriers are because the tyres are too tall. But again, this will be part of the drivers learning the size of their own cars and feeding back to the tracks where needed. Characterise, what can we expect from these new tyres? And in fact, what do I even mean by character? Well, what I'm talking about is the way the tyre heats up, the temperatures it needs to work optimally, how grippy it is and what its degradation looks like. We've had different characters of tyres over the years. Early Pirelli tyres were grippy and sustained that grip before suddenly dropping off a cliff when their life ran out. More recently, tyre performances tended to drop off gradually with use, more so when pushed. This has led drivers tending to hold back performance as it worked out to be faster overall to drive at a reduced pace and take your set of tyres longer than drive at the limit, push the tyres harder and have to go for an extra pit stop. This is a tricky balance which we'll cover in an upcoming video, but this year it was agreed that Pirelli should optimise their tyres more towards allowing the drivers to push more. 
F1 and the drivers wanted more pushing laps and more time spent at the limit, so hopefully that's what we'll get more of. Now this may come at the expense of more pit stops, but we'll see. Interestingly, there is a big unknown in one element of tyre life and degradation in 2022, dirty air. Now the big aero cleanup part of the rules is supposed to significantly tidy up the turbulent, messy airflow behind cars. Part of the downside of following the dirty, dirty, dirty air of another car is it massively reduces your front downforce. And with that, the front of the car slides when turning through the corners. And if the car slides, it rubs the tyres, heats them up, forces them to degrade more quickly. So if the aero side of the rules are effective, we may see tyres able to be pushed more anyway. But again, this remains to be seen as we won't see the full effects of this until the first racing Sunday of the season. Keeping the tyres within the right temperature window plays a big part in how the tyres drive the car and also how the cars themselves are designed and managed. The tyres are currently Bambi on ice at low temperatures, so teams use electric tyre blankets to get them up to racing temperature before putting them on the cars. But this is a tremendous waste of energy, so F1 is finally looking to phase them out, fingers crossed. This year the blankets have been reduced in temperature from 100 degrees at the front and 80 degrees at the rear to 70 degrees all round, and in theory these will be phased out completely by 2024, just two seasons away, so I'll believe that when I see it. Either way, this year all tyres will have to work from a 70 degree starting temperature, which is something Pirelli and the teams will have to manage, and eventually they will have to work from ambient temperature. At the moment, they just don't, but they can be designed to. Formula 2 does not use tyre blankets. Their tyres are made to handle that, but the performance difference between a cold tyre and one that's been worked up to temperature is significant without being dangerous. And actually, this is a crucial part of race strategy in Formula 2, managing this slow outlap from the pits while you heat up the tyres without losing a net position to your rivals is super interesting to watch. So F1 can really only benefit from this. Famous last words. There are obviously a few other factors that feed into managing the temperature of the tyres. Obviously, the slimmer profile means the rubber itself is less stretchy, and the stretching and deforming of the rubber is what heats it up. So, depending on how Pirelli designed the tyre, it may take a longer time to work temperature into the tyre via driving. Factors that go into this tyre's design include its, its profile, which is the distance from the wheel rim to the tyre edge, its footprint, which is the part of the tyre tread that actually touches the track, and, and this can change with fuel load, temperature, pressure, braking, accelerating and turning. There's also its, which is the actual structure of the tyre the within, the belts, the layers, the shape of the tyre itself. And its compound, the actual chemical makeup of the actual rubber itself. All of these together affect how the tyre behaves across its life on track, including when it fails. And of course, some of this comes down to how teams use the tyres, something that's quite hard for Pirelli to control. And again, we'll talk about that in the other video. Controlling temperature comes from other parts of the wheel too, and these two have been affected by the new rules. The brakes, for example. Now while they have been enlarged from 270mm both ends to around 330mm up front, they are now a significant distance from the rims of the wheels. Previously, the heat from the brake temperature would flow through the wheel into the tyre. Now there's more room for the heat to be passed away from the tyre in the airstream. This is something different to manage. Not necessarily a blessing or a curse, as heat transfer to the tyre can both help bring rubber into the right window, or push it too hot and into that high degradation area. So it's just different now. And speaking of managing airflow in and around the tyres, we've got these spec wheel fairings on all the wheels now. Teams have played around with fairings a bit in the past, ultimately with the fixed fairings of the late 2000s being designed to increase energetic air around the sides of the cars. But now in 2022, these, as well as the inside fins, are on the cars to clear up the messy air around the tyres created by, well, a very fast spinning wheel which churns up air like nobody's business. The hubs have got a little groove around the edge to help mechanics carry the tyres a little more easily because, well, the tyres remain pretty hefty things at around 11 to 13 kilograms each. And importantly, the wheels and these hubs are now all made by a sole supplier, currently BBS. This makes things easier and has allowed Pirelli and BBS to work together on the whole wheel tyre package more efficiently, setting up our regular working group to feed back to each other and more fully understand how the tyres and the wheels are working and what common challenges they face. And this can only be beneficial. 
Now through their massive testing campaign, Pirelli say their 2022 spec tyres have gone from about 3 seconds off the previous tyres pace to about 1 second or even half a second a lap off. And they're expecting parity by the end of the season, which is pretty cool. Though, again, it's all a little bit apples and oranges between the two types of tyre for all the reasons we've just talked about. It's ultimately going to be interesting and tricky to judge the successes of these new tyres and wheels this year as they are all bundled in with all the other regulation changes and goings on. So isolating one factor in these new cars will take a little while. But I think one thing is for certain. They do look very cool. As mentioned, this video is brought to you by Brilliant, an online learning tool for STEM topics with a strong focus on interactive lessons to help you fully understand and appreciate the concepts within. Now this is right up my alley. I've had previous in STEM education before and I can tell you this hands-on, crunchy kind of learning is so very powerful. Now on this channel, I have tried to bring a visualized kind of learning and communication to really help us understand conceptually what's going on with each topic. But Brilliant takes it further, letting you interact with their models and use them to solve challenges via a more complete understanding. It is very cool. Not everyone can understand STEM stuff. You're not hardwired to either get mathsy stuff or not, but there are more effective ways to get into these subjects. So if you are interested about particular scientific topics or you thought you could never get your head around the maths or something, Brilliant uses storytelling, interactive challenges and these clever visual examples to allow you to get into it, meeting you at your level and progressing you at your own confidence. And a lot of the courses covered across Brilliant tie into the many things we discuss right here on this channel. You can enjoy Brilliant too by going to brilliant.org slash chamber and the first 200 people to use this link will get a handy 20% off the annual subscription.